Trending essay right here on SABC3. It's officially Friday. As Zulu people say, Zim Fry. And we are here oh, to usher okay. you into the weekend. I am Mable. And I have with me the feisty and fabulous Elma Smith without the H. I have not even brought the feisty yet, and you're already whipping out that word. <laughs> they, they call them feisty when they can, you know, when they've got their own thought process. Mm. Boo! And, and of course, to complete this triangle, we have the beautiful, the effervescent, the encyclopedic, Refilo Mpakanyani, how are you? Oh my goodness, Encyclopedia. I'm good. I'm Encyclopedia. fabulous. Yes, nice. I'll take that. You want to drop new <laughs> no, ones? I'm not again. sure if it's sexy, but it's. I'll yeah. keep it. Yeah, I like you, it. You, you drop new ones every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> right, and we also have the gorgeous lady filling the fourth seat tonight. Mm -hmm. She is a fashion slayer, a TV and radio personality. Mm -hmm. She's also mother to hip and hop. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello. To loot love. Coming through with the bow reel then. Woo! Did you I like, love did you like, did you like, did you like, the bow. It's beautiful. Smooth thing. That smooth thing. I didn't do it, you know. I, I'm I, need I, you to I'm come everywhere with me. Oh, 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 oh okay. No, I had to do it with you. Also, next week it's back to regular. Just give programming. us another look. <laughs> give us another. Just frame the bow for us. us? Yeah. Oh, Let's come Diana through with the stage. Yeah. It's so good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I'm so excited. It's oh my goodness, it's going to be amazing. Yay. And uh, it's not just about today, actually. Yes. Right? Miss Thang over here on my right mm -hmm. has decided all to Yena next week. She's going. Traitor. <coughs> Traitor. Uh, She's going. She's abandoning us. Uh -uh. Enemy of the state. <laughs> <laughs> and so See. the cool thing is, mm. we ran a competition yes. online mm -hmm. to ask you at home on our social medias to guess who our guest host for next week would go, was going to be. And of course, the winner, as you can see on the screen there, is at Finocia Andili. Yay! And she accurately Yay! guessed Loot Love. Yes, you heard right. Lute Love, this fabulous, pretty, amazing fashion slayer here on my left, will be joining my Blair and I on the show as a guest host from next week, Monday. It's so going to be so much fun. Yay. It's going to be so much fun. I'm going to keep an eye on eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, um, what can people look forward to from you mm. on the show? Press of vibes. A bit of shade. Okay. Um, more hair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how are the twins doing? Oh, terrorizing my whole life. I, I, yeah. Look at no, you guys look no respect. Aww. Like I love that. that shoot alone, guys, should tell you how my life really is. Like nothing is cute. <laughs> nothing is. Are planned. you laughing or are you crying? I'm both. You look, you look equally. Beautiful, but maybe I'm you're everything they crying. are falling apart, <laughs> sliding off. Just it's a mess, but it's I'm really also great. I'm a father of twins, by the way. Oh wow. Mm. My blame. Hey, hey, my blame. Hey, hey. It oh. wouldn't be a Friday here <laughs> on Trending SA if we didn't have some hot topics to unpack on our round table. Ladies, what interesting topics caught your eye? Okay, so the Domestic Violence Amendment Bill caught my eye today. Mm -hmm. It proposes a number of interesting legislative changes, and these are aimed at increasing the protection afforded to victims of domestic violence. You know, in his, new, in his weekly newsletter, um, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced three new bills uh, in order to fight domestic violence. Uh, I want us to break down what's involved in these bills. Okay, number one. The National Register for All Sex Offenders will include the particulars of all sex offenders and this will be publicly available. Mm. What's interesting is that it will also extend the ambit of the definition of the offence of incest, yeah. which yeah. is when you have sex with your family, and it extends the reporting duty of people who suspect a sexual offence has been committed against a child. Mm. And then the Criminal and Related Matters Amendment Bill then tightens the granting of bail to perpetrators of gender-based violence and femicide, and it also expands the offences for which minimum sentences must be imposed. So uh, if you're a magistrate out there and you take a very light view of certain things, it won't be a choice to impose minimum sentences. Yeah, so social media weighed in on these proposed bills. Saki Africa 
um, says you have brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, and cousins that you know are abusive. Some are rapists, but you don't report them or call them trash because you call it family matters. Yeah, Once that person is done destroying your family, then they go terrorize the community. Hashtag stop GBV. Woo! So obviously the obvious question, what do you think of these uh, bills, and these proposed amendments? Lutz, what's your take? I, 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 I want to know uh, how, how long do we have until this is enforced on society? And, and what happens in the meantime? Mm -hmm. So you're all about the turnaround time? 100%. Because mm -hmm. people, women, are still dying every mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. Every how many seconds? Mm -hmm. how, many, how many hashtags are we busy with every single day? This week alone. What now? Yeah. 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 Uh, for me, it is we need to fix enforcement. We can write bills, 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 like Destiny's Child. Mm -hmm. If we do not fix the protection of women when they enter a police station, then I don't care. Because we can't enforce the bills that we have right now. Yeah, but it's not a zero-sum game. So I get you. Enforcement mm. is a big issue. Culture is another big yeah. issue. Um, but we can't stop um, promulgating new and better legislation only because an entirely different branch of government isn't working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to keep doing that work, not take our foot off that pedal, sure. but also put pressure and start demanding the other branches of government to come to the party. You know, okay, so our inability to prosecute, right, notwithstanding, for me, what sticks out the most, and I'm not sure if I'm scared or if I'm impressed, is the criminalization or the potential criminalization of, of silence, right? If you suspect something is happening to a child and you say nothing, you are now in trouble. I like that. We one. are all on notice now. Yeah. We're being put on notice. Yeah. I like that one. That is yeah. very, very deep. Now, the EFF is hell-bent on being and staying in the news this week. So, while the president, on the one hand, is trying to tighten the screws on GBV, the EFF's Mbuizeni and Lozi has come under fire for his remarks uh, related to the harassment of an ENCA reporter by EFF protesters, as you can see in this clip. So problematic what he said on Twitter afterwards. They are telling her that she can be there but not allowed to talk to the EFF members. It means she was trying to interview them. I really do not see harassment here. Merely touching her is not harassment. The touch, touch has to be invasive, violent or harmful to become harassment. Mm. Pablé, help. Help the men of this country, please. Give me, give me this. Touching someone without their consent mm. is harassment. I, I just have a problem with the fact that, you know, it has to be gruesome to be violent. Yes. I have a problem with the fact that touching someone is not invasive. That's, sure. that's, that's dangerous. You can't say that out loud. Okay, <laughs> we are going to quickly take a break and chat to Mable there in the corner. Remember to weigh in and engage with us on all our social media platforms using the hashtag on 3 Frame the bow, frame the bow, frame the bow. <laughs> oh, no. And welcome back. You're still watching Trending SA. Don't forget to get involved in our conversations by sharing your views with us on all our social media platforms. Elma, what in the world is happening in the world of sports? So much has been happening <laughs> with Cricket SA this week. I have been telling you guys we need to hold off on this Cricket SA conversation because every week it just gets even crazier. Mm -hmm. And now we've reached a point where we can't not talk about the transformation, the people being, you know, shown the door and then new people acting and officials resigning and open letters from the Proteas. And now the ICC apparently is also getting involved. And the, I mean, the, the, the depth of this and the breadth of it is Unbelievable. So we are joined via Skype by a very respected cricket journalist, Fidos Munda, all the way from Cape Town. Welcome to Training SA, Fidos. <laughs> nice to see you, Elma. Thanks for having me. Okay, so Fidos, I know this sounds like an oversimplification to anyone who's been following the story closely, but how did we get here? <laughs> I'm going to use up your whole show if you want the answer <laughs> to that question. 
But yeah, I mean, I think the problems probably started around mid 2018 when Tabang Marawi was confirmed CSA's permanent CEO. By that stage, Harun Logat, who was the former CEO, had been gone for about nine months. And we really started to see the relationship between Cricket South Africa and the South African Cricketers Association, which is the body that represents the players, begin to fracture severely. So it had been strained. And then at that point, we saw things get really bad. And we just saw a disconnect between the executive office and the players. And we have to remember that the players are what make Cricket South Africa money. They are the product. So to have that disconnect uh, was very unhelpful. Then a string of poor results, a lot of retirements of high-profile players, losing big series, including back-to-back -back losses to Sri Lanka home and away, which really a South African team should not be doing. Failure at the World Cup, governance crisis, financial crisis, and COVID in yes. summary, is probably how we got to this You're point. But yeah, hectic. it's been big trouble. You know, I've been covering cricket pretty much my whole career. And I think now I can say with a straight face, I'm very concerned. Sure. Now, uh, Fidoz, um, transformation has been a big talking point in South African cricket, uh, particularly with the Black Lives Matter movement. Why has it been so difficult to transform the sport? Phew, again. <laughs> How long is it? Like? Where's John? I mean, I think our major problem is that our top cricketers are still produced from a handful of elite schools. Mm. And so when we transform, we will maybe see more transformation. I think that's level one. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a level above that, which is really about professional sport. And our socioeconomic history and our socioeconomic present means that a lot of people of colour simply can't spend a year or two after school seeing if they're going to make it as professional sports people. Mm. So okay. if they're not given a contract at that point, a professional franchise contract, which pays a decent amount of money to cover not just their living, but if we're honest, also their black tax, yeah. then we're going to get to a point where those people will walk away from the game. That layered with the fact that mindsets have taken so long to change in South African cricket has resulted in many promising players of colour walking away at the crucial stage when they could have gone on to become professionals. Yeah. And so we get a situation where there are not enough players of colour coming through the franchise system, and maybe that's starting to change now, but there's not a big enough pool to start filtering through to national level. You know, what I'm curious about for those then is with all the issues that CSA is actually experiencing, if you, you know, what does a turnaround plan look like for the organization? If you were emperor of C, uh, CSA, what would you recommend? Look, the board's got to go. That That is really the first thing, because many of the members on the board were there when Gerald Majola was dismissed, and that's more than eight years ago. Mm -hmm. The recommendations from the Nicholson Commission, which are that three-quarters of the board must be independent, have not mm -hmm. been adhered to. And until we see that structural change, I don't know that we're going to see a change in governance. That's mm -hmm. kind of one executive side of things that needs to happen. From a playing side of things, I mean, the game's got to restart. Mm -hmm. We don't even know when we'll have domestic fixtures in this country. We don't know when the borders will open and into national teams can come or the South African teams can, can leave. Yeah. Now, uh, Cricket South Africa appointed uh, Kugante Governor as the interim CEO. She's the first woman to be appointed in that position. So can you please tell us a bit um, more about the sort of leader she is and how this might possibly play out considering all the issues that uh, CSA is facing right now and is it likely to survive a storm? Mm. I mean, I think we need to remember that uh, Kugandri Govind is in an acting position, and so we don't know how long she will be in the role. It's possible it will only be until an AGM and a recruitment process, and we don't know when that will be. So I suppose, you know, how long is a piece of string? She could be there till the end of the year. <laughs> there, uh, we're talking again in 2025. <laughs> so, you know, Jacques Fall came back in an acting role twice. So, so anything's sure. possible, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't know too much about Kagandri as a CEO because she hasn't been a CEO before. We know she's got a lot of corporate experience and that she was the chief commercial officer at CSA. So, you know, if finances mm. are what we're talking about and, and we were talking about that, then hopefully she's going to be the person to start signing some, some broadcast deals and start convincing corporate partners that cricket is worth investing in. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for Dios. You can just tell she has... Put Lady in the time. Has a <laughs> yes. In the yes. Thank you for joining us and really helping us understand the issues with CSA right now for Dose. It was great to see you again. We'll continue to keep an eye on the story as it unfolds. We're going for a quick break. And then when we come back, my Blair had an interesting conversation with one of his besties who happens to also be a global superstar. He keeps telling us. You don't want to miss this one, I promise. Be clean. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back to Trending SA. So earlier today, um, basically they needed a recognized musician in South Africa to speak to an internationally <laughs> recognized musician. So... Wow, <laughs> the ego wow. is no, What was no. that? Goodness. This beautiful... Well, who else is nominated for a summer here? Yes, don't pull rank on a so, summer So, yeah. So we had the beautiful vocal powerhouse, <laughs> Tamir, and I spoke to her. Take a look. Shoot. Welcome to the show, the incredible Tamia. How are you? Good. <laughs> oh, I know you love South Africa so much. Don't you wish you were here right now? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I wish I was there right now. Tamia, I will speak as somebody who grew up with your music. Do you understand the impact that your music has had in South Africa? Because, you know, I, I sometimes don't think you do. Do you know how much you mean to us? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I kind of got an idea when I first went to South Africa mm -hmm. and I received such a warm welcome. It was, it, it was really what artists dream about their whole life. And, you know, being up there on stage and everyone singing your songs, it was amazing. And to me, you know, like I, I look at the U.S. market. Whenever they're consuming your music, I get so upset because they would go on about so into you, and I'm just like, this woman is so much more than so into you. We cons we didn't consume just so into you in that album. We consumed it from imagination until you put a right. move in my heart. Like my favorite song from that album is "Loving You Still." Oh. Oh. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> yes, that is a song that and was... a half. If you could see the way I live my life, you could see the way I cry at night. <laughs> yeah. You can oh, understand the you reason were such why. A deep, you were such a deep child. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was. I was definitely a deep child. Tamir, please tell us, uh, because your career catapulted when Quincy Jones spotted you at that benefit mm -hmm. and said, this is that girl. Tell me about the time when you guys recorded You Put a Move on My Heart. It was such an amazing experience. That song is a singer's song. You know, it's an amazing song. So I was so happy to do that. And then he invited me on his tour mm -hmm. because he made that song the first single. And I went around the world with Quincy Jones, which was pretty cool. Okay. You are part of a yeah. campaign right now that is bringing a lot of amazing R&B musicians and soul musicians together, both young and old. Tell us about Soul September. So September. So that was an opportunity for me to just compile a playlist of songs that I love. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there's a song on there that's Shalimar, A Night to Remember. Yes. I often play that song before I go on stage because mm -hmm. it just kind of, you know, kind of just gets me mm -hmm. going. Um, and then, of course, there are people that I love. Anita Baker, Jade, um, Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. What's, uh, your, favorite Whitney What's your favorite Whitney song? What's your favorite Whitney song? Can you pick a favorite Whitney Houston song? I think, um, so I'm saving all my love for you. Thank you. You know, because um, you can't really pick a favorite Whitney song. You can't. You can't. What about yours? My, what about yours? Okay, you're going to get disappointed. Uh, I'm a huge Whitney fan, <laughs> but okay. there's something about it's not right, but it's okay. The mathematics. Oh, it's yes. But it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make it anyway. anyway. Yeah. You can sing anything. <laughs> you can sing the telephone book, right? So another, <laughs> another thing that I want to talk about is how you are an advocate for MS. Um, mm -hmm. Please tell me the strides that you've made within, you know, the whole realm of MS. Yes. Well, um, several years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. MS. And um, fortunately for me, it has not stopped me one bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I do believe in staying busy and kind of exercising, taking care of yourself, um, so that's really what I've been doing over the years. And music has been a huge part of, of sort of an outlet for me. And, and I believe, I actually believe keeping me healthy in a way mm. in that you're get you're able to get all those emotions going and release those emotions and things like that. So. Okay. And right now, Tamir, 
what's currently on your playlist? What are you listening to? So I can listen to it. Because if you listen to it, it's good enough for me. Hmm. What's currently on my playlist? Mm -hmm. Let me think about it. Well, on, on my, to me, a playlist now, mm -hmm. I have everything from Sade to Anita Baker. Mm -hmm. um, and it was not easy choosing songs. <laughs> <laughs> like... We were talking about Whitney Houston. I put on Your Love Is My Love because that's what I'm feeling right now, right? Mm -hmm. Your love is my love and, and my, my love is, is your love. love. It'll take an eternity <laughs> it would to, take break, an eternity <laughs> to break, break us and the chains of all my star couldn't mm -hmm. hold us. Ah, uh, I could <laughs> listen to you sing the entire day. I really could listen. To <laughs> when are you coming back to South Africa? Because the last time you were Me. here... It was a sing-along. That's always amazing when that happens. Mm. Um, so it's always a good time. And please just come here and sing that debut album, take our coins and get on the plane and leave. Because that is, <laughs> that is the gold standard. From I Gotta Move On to oh, oh, Loving You Still. This time it's love. This time it's love. Yeah. That song used to make me cry, by the way. I don't know why I wasn't dating oh. anyone. That's so strange. It's the strangest, <laughs> it's the strangest thing ever. <laughs> Tamia. Thank you so much for joining us on Trending Thank SA. You. And we hope that the next time you come to South Africa, you're going to be sitting right here next to me and my co-host. We love you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep my seat warm. We will. Definitely. See you soon. <laughs> Ciao. You know, my play, look at you hobnobbing with okay. the likes of Tamia. I am just stunned at the audacity, <laughs> the nerve mm, <laughs> to sing along the whilst Tamia <laughs> is singing. <laughs> wow. I'd do the same thing. Would you? This is your moment. Oh my. You're never going to get it again. Are you serious? 100%. But no, she, no, I, respect the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. feel like she's no. incredibly gracious. Uh -huh. I can't <laughs> say anything to you peasants right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, the you shade are, is just well being well, thrown. Well, you are literally not going to be able to live with him next week. We'll never be able to live it down. But you at home, thank you so much for joining us this week. We have more trends and topics to tackle with you. On Monday, we have DA leader John Steenhazen. You don't want to miss that. If you still can't get enough of us, you can catch the trending essay Omnibus from 9.30 until 11.30 a.m. on Sunday, right here on SABC3. And of course, Loot Love! Good night. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>